William Hill sponsors Martin vs. Joshua on Sky Sports Box Office. What are you going to do when that ring, when that bell rings, and how does this fight end? Give me, break it down for me. Bell rings, you know, you're on their feet. I step out, you know, a little bit of head movement. You know, establish my jab up here. Like little faint, up oh, there is, and the jab to the head again. I mean, little faints, let him back up a bit. Ba Bam, there it is. Okay, cool. Charles Martin, a bit wary now. Throws a big hook. Oh, there he is. Now I'm comfortable. I'm in my element because he can't do what he does normally to these novices and cab drivers. He's, been he's stepping up against someone who's been in deep water. There's certain things he's going to try aren't going to work. And he's just going to slowly, slowly, slowly crumble within himself and his confidence and his boxing ability is going to become established. I'm going to knock him out the same way he believes he will to me. 17 stone six for the undefeated challenger. Right hand, left hook ends the fight. I'm telling you, because because he's, he's he's so much of thinking fire. What, what happens is when he's jabbing, he jab, he jab and he dip. And when he's dipping, he's dipping to the right hand. Mm. And as he gets hit with that right hand jerk back, mm. then that left hook will come around the side. Bang. And I think it's it's, it's it's all that. And I think it's gonna end really really quickly. Repeat. This is not a drill. Give me one, or even two things that you do better than Anthony Joshua. Everything. I'm I'm a, I'm a well-rounded fighter. You know, um, it's not it's not about what I do better. It's just you have to you have to be. It's all it's a game of who who's more well-rounded, who's more adjustable. You know what I mean? That's that's what the game's all about. You can't you can't go in in the fight with everybody and be one-dimensional. One-dimensional, somebody's gonna catch up to you eventually. You know, but if you're well-rounded, that's what makes you have more. Adjustment, you know, you're more adjustable. So, more people are going to see you this Saturday night at the O2 Arena than the people have seen you in all of 21 of your entire fights. Yes. What are they going to find out about Charles Martin, and how is this fight going to end when the final bell is rung? That I got some sneaky power. I'm not. I'm just not a strong dude. That just, mm, but I, but I, but it's sneaky, man. You know, got you know, guys get comfortable and then, boop, they didn't even see it. They're like, whoa, what the fuck was that? You know, that's how it goes, man. Twenty-three victories, twenty-one wins by KO. He is the undefeated heavyweight world champion, Prince Charles Martin. Obviously, you've been presenting for Sky Sports. We'd love to get your opinion about this fight. I bet you would. What do you want to know? I want to know who's going to win, how they're going to win, and what round. You don't want to know much, do you? <laughs> it's, just, it's just a gambling website. It's a gambling website. People are putting their, putting their house payments down on this, so Carl. What? Don't let us down. 75% of the bets are going on Martin because of the 5 to 1. Right. The odds. And um, that's good value for money in a fight that potentially, from, from my point drill. of view, could be a 50 50 fight. And you can't really pick a winner because Josh is in his 16th fight. Uh, Martin's 20, 25th fight, he's got right. the belt, but he didn't really go win that belt, did he? He didn't go and take it off a champion, it was a vacant belt, Tyson Fury got stripped, and Grasscarp in round three, his knee just collapsed from his crucial ligament, whatever he did to his knee. So, he didn't really go and fight for that belt like you want to as a champion. Everybody knows that Anthony Joshua was headed towards a title shot. Nobody thought this fast. Talk to me about how this fight came about. And uh, Charles Martin called Anthony Joshua out. His promoters come on. I said, like, is this for real? They went, yeah. Obviously, he wanted a lot of money, but we, we could do that. And it was just a case of whether Anthony would take the fight and, uh, you know, whether he, he felt like it was the right time. Forgetting everything, forgetting the world title was just, can you beat Charles Martin? And the answer was, yes, I believe I can. And when you say that, you have to take the fight, you know. So people come on and say, yeah, you know, it's a bit early. No, no, it's the fight. Forget the title, it's the fight. It's a tough fight. Oh, shout. Let's begin. I came here to motivate. I came here to congratulate and to wish Anthony good luck. He's not here yet. I know Where he at? In the ring. Where he at? You've got George Groves in the ring. Where's George Groves? You just crashed his training. Oh, man, I'm sorry for that, but the people got to know the champ is here. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ! Are you calling people out today or what? No, I'm here. I'm here to actually wish good luck to Anthony and to Charles for a great fight. You know, this is great for boxing.
boxing. And this is great that Eddie Hearns put this on. This is great for Europe. This is great for boxing all around the world. You just yeah. created the room, do you know that? Let's go, champ! Let's go! Saturday night, we have the opportunity to take this sport to a whole new level. Many feel that it's too early for Anthony Joshua. Many feel that Charles Martin will be the guy to retain his belt. I say, don't wait for the perfect moment. Take the moment and make it perfect. And on Saturday night, you're going to get an atmosphere I think we will never forget. I believe it will be a where were you when moment for British sport. This is not a drill. I'm really, you know, at this point I become Pete, short for words, you know, I don't really do too much talking, you know, because I'm a boxer, I'm a fighter, and that's what, that's what we do, we come to fight, so I'm all geared up, and I'm ready. I don't think he should be fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world just yet. I would much have preferred to see him have at least two or three more fights, and fight for the world title this time next year. That doesn't mean I don't think he's going to win it. Because if you win it, then who is he going to fight? Who is he going to defend against? The IBF will be picking his opponents for him. So that's why I think he should perhaps have waited a little bit longer. But he's young and ambitious. The opportunity came along, so I can understand why he wanted to take it right now. You know, really both fighters are taking a chance. You have a, a fighter who's the challenger, 15 and 0, 15 KOs, moving up to fight a world champion. Uh, Charles Martin, Prince Charles Martin, has a great title to come here and fight for that name. He uh, is really showing his what he's made of to make his first title defense here 6,000 miles from home. I think he lives in Carson, California, St. Louis native. And uh, you know, it shows that he has confidence, he has courage, and he's a big guy. I mean, I just saw him for the first time here at this press conference. And uh, six feet six, six feet five, 245, big puncher, 21 KOs in his 23 wins. He hasn't lost a fight yet, one draw. Um, I think all we need is a referee that knows how to count to 10. Um, once again, we don't we don't think this fight's going to go the distance, do you? Not at all, not at all. Uh, all right, so let me ask you this. I know you're not going to give me a direct prediction, but I'll put it to you this way. If the fight stops under five rounds, who do you have winning? Come on, you know, come on, Rahim. you know better than that. I got, we've, we've been doing I got an over-under. We've been doing this for one, you always try to do this, now, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Alright, well. The only thing, and I've said this to you before, the only thing I will predict is pain. Pain. <laughs> Alright, no matter what round, we're going to definitely get some pain. Lang from Rocky 3 or 4, whatever it was, pain. Alright, so some analysts think that under five rounds, whatever the odds are, that maybe Martin could surprise him early. If it goes long, then Joshua's probably going to go ahead and get that victory between 7 and 12. That's why I asked that question. You know, all those analysts, they, they never took a punch. So right. we just have to let these guys do what they got to do. Pete, this is not a drill. I mean, people will say that he won the title from a guy who got it by default. If he then takes an easy, easy fight or, you know, doesn't he kind of have to earn it then himself, take a tough fight to prove his, his medal? Uh, I don't think so. You know, I think people will get it. He's only, he's, he's a 15 fight novice really, and he's happened to have a, a world title wrapped down his potentially tomorrow. So it'll be a 16 fight, um, a 16 uh, fight, well, fight boxer. Fight, right. After tomorrow night, if he's to win, and how many of those 16 fights would have been a world-class opposition? Charles Martin would be probably the only one. Um, his last fight against Dylan White. Dylan White's a domestic class fighter. He hadn't fought anyone world-class at that point, um, and he lost. He lost by an uh, eight-round knockout. Um, so I'd, I'd, I'd understand if he wanted to get a little bit more experience and wants to take an easy fight. Not an easy fight, but it's not a killer. He's not going to fight a David Hay or, or a Tyson Fury or someone like or a Joseph Parker. He takes someone who's ranked in the top 15 by the IBF just to keep him busy, sell out an arena, earn some money. Because he doesn't know when he does step up to that genuine, genuine world class with someone who is a former champion who's been there and done it, it may be his last fight. So I understand he wanted to earn some money and what he's learning. 
this is one of those fights where you've got two fighters that believe they are going to win no matter what. Usually you have two fighters, they'll say they're going to win, they're going to do this, that and the other, but one of them thinks, wow, this boy's a badder. You've got two fighters that believe they're going to win. And you can see every reason why one fighter could win and one fighter could lose. This is going to be such a, such a fight, I'm sure. A lot of people see Charles Martin as an unknown quantity. Yeah. We haven't seen him on this stage often. That's he won the secret. title. That's his secret. Because, listen, he's at the box in everybody's backyard. Even when he boxed for the title, you heard a commentator saying, who is Charles Martin? They talked to him about his record. They didn't know the depths of this guy. Then when you hear him talk, then when you hear his story, then you, when, you, when I really think a fighter, when he can go into the background, into, into the backyard of an opponent, and still win, and come out victorious. Charles Martin's unbeaten. So that means this boy can be doing, he's doing something. So if you underestimate him, more fool you. You know, and he, and he, he knows. Maybe his style doesn't look attractive. His style doesn't look, wow, this guy's dangerous, but his style is effective. Anthony Joshua's style looks attractive and effective and dangerous. That's why Anthony Joshua is probably more known than Charles Martin. But then you get the old heads like Shannon Briggs, uh, Holyfield, Bull saying this boy is dangerous. They're bigging him up, the ones on the under underground, the ones that know what's happening in the background. And they big him up, big style, like you think, wow, you know what? You've got to give him. Fighting Charles Martin here, as you all know, Southpaw fighter. Big, tricky, all credit to him for taking himself from zero to hero and the journey that I'm following as well from zero to hero myself. We're just fighters. I know you mentioned about the whole UK behind myself and uh, the team, so on and so forth. If my dreams that come to fruition, does it affect everyone else? It just affects myself because it's just me in that ring every time I step in and no one else steps in with me. So it's my dream that gets shot. And that's why over camp, over the years that I've been in training camp, we train, we stay dedicated and disciplined to protect our dreams the best way possible. That's why if he wants to box, we can box. If he wants to go to deep waters, you know I'm here to fight. That's why these shows sell out, not just myself, the amazing undercard they put on, but they know when it comes to these big heavy hitters, we don't play games, we're here to go to war. And as I said, we've just got two generals in the ring and the best army wins. So I look forward to it. I'm looking forward to Saturday. And I appreciate everyone coming out this afternoon. Martin won't want to let the belt go, but he didn't really earn it like you want to earn it. So he's either going to take it for granted, enjoy the payday and go home without his belt, or he's going to come here hungry like a challenger and really leave it all in that ring. And if he does that, he'll be dangerous. He'll be a threat for Josh. That's been a big debate in the States whether or not Martin should consider himself a true champion. Do you think he can? Well, it's difficult. He is a champion. He's got the belt. You can't dispute that. But he didn't fight the champion for the belt. He didn't take it off the champ. Tyson Fury was the champ. He was stripped. So I think in his own mind, he realizes that although he's got that belt, really, he needs to fight somebody to then stamp his authority on, world, on the world level. And he's not done that yet. Do you feel like this fight is really the fight that makes you champion? And if not, what did you do in that fight with Glasgow to win it, not to just allow him to lose it? Um, I'm, I'm already champion. You know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna accept that because, you know, that's what I did. I went in there, I trained for that fight, you know, 11 weeks for that fight and I won it. Um, but this is a, definitely a fight to, for me to showcase, you know, my skills and me being a well-rounded fighter, you know, what we've been working on this time around. It's sooner than we expected, but it was definitely a path we was on. So, you know, uh, my promoters got a good relationship with different promoters around the world, and that's always important when it comes down to stealing the fight. Um, we had a fight lined up with Glasgow, if you won anyway, so that was the route we was going anyway. And as I said, from that stage, we've always looked at the opponents we're fighting rather than the rewards we're going to get once we win. That's good. So then um, Charles Martin happened to win, and I think he looked at the next hot prospect on the block and thought he'll come over to the UK. He really saw weaknesses in my fights or looked at the opportunity of coming to the UK and fighting and took one of the opportunities and called me out. And as it was a road I was planning on going down anyway, I took that uh, opportunity with both hands and it was easily done. We got a deal negotiated and then the fight's here now, only a couple days away. The undefeated challenger, ladies and gentlemen, Anthony!
Willingham Hill sponsors Martin vs. Joshua on Sky Sports Box Office.